here we are uh, I want to welcome you to our 40th film in our little series pattern of the month and uh, every time I tell you we're gonna tie something completely different but today it's gonna be very very different um, I don't know how many of you that actually fish on the surface fish different kind of dries and uh, skaters where you can see the fish come up and take you to fly it's uh, fantastic i've been lucky to do it here in scandinavia and in iceland and in canada and in argentina and many different places and it is very exciting but it can also be very very effective okay so uh, I've been, as you know, we we have built a team of very good uh, fishermen and fly tires around our little company, Freddie and Flies. And one of them is a Danish guy, uh, Peter Brick Christensen. And Peter, he's uh, like the foam guy. He fishes foam flies for both salmon and sea trout. And uh, today I'm uh, planning to tie one of his uh, flies, one of his little foam flies on a tube, uh, very different. And uh, I was thinking that we uh, should do this, that I done once before, I think in, in our little series, let's call Peter and see uh, uh, if we can have his thoughts and uh, ideas around this. Let's help he answers now. And... Yeah. Hi Peter, this is Michael. And, uh, <laughs> and I know you know that uh, uh, we're actually trying to do a little film here. And uh, we are going to tie one of your flies. And uh, I've been bragging about how many big fish and how good you are at this. And how, di how different your little foam fly, rubber, uh, rubber uh, legged foam fly is. But tell us, what's the idea behind it? And, uh, and how do you fish it? And uh, what's the secret? Oh, uh, it's, a, it's a long story, but uh, let's make it short. Um, I started fishing uh, Seaborn Browns in rivers uh, 10 years ago uh, on the surface. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I fished them with uh, regular dry flies, and uh, I found it very interesting and, and very efficient. Uh, but the flies uh, were smashed. Uh, after one, two or three fish, and I started to uh, experience a little bit uh, with foam. And um, I, I found out that uh, they, uh, they attack the foam just as much as regular dry flies. Oh. So um, from that on, I only tied with foam because the foam lasts almost forever and uh, if you lose a leg or two you can tie in another one and then you can fish on again okay um, I, I i tried quite a lot uh, different uh, patterns um, before i ended up uh, with the, the beaver tail form yeah um, and then um, i think the form uh, on the fly is uh, not that uh, important but um, it makes a difference when you when you fish it in uh, in shallow waters um, mm. but uh, uh, do you say shallow waters how shallow do you fish it, uh, it, it it's uh, i fish it uh, from um, from one and a half meters to uh, half meters Okay. Do you think they come for a dry even uh, uh, deeper from deeper waters than one and a half? Yeah, I, I've, I've seen them uh, rising for the fly, but uh, it's it's like they they don't take it that hard when they come from the deep. Um, it's like uh, two meters is, is the limit. Okay. 
And and uh, is that in Clearwater or is it in uh, Danish uh, Danish rivers so that's got a bit of humus to it or or when do you think it's best? I think it, it the, the color the color of the water is uh, is uh, it influences the the fishing of course but we have uh, quite uh, clear waters in Denmark as well and uh, of course the, the clear waters are the best. Uh, for this sort of fishing, mm. but um, uh, but uh, if you uh, got uh, twenty to uh, fifty centimeters uh, uh, side, then it's okay. Then okay, uh, we'll raise bait. Anyway. Have, have you fished them in Norway too? Yes, I have. Yeah, um, with success. Yeah, yeah, quite success, but. Um, uh, mostly on the uh, Seaman Browns. Um, I, I fish them uh, for salmon as well, and I, I get a lot of uh, attention of it from oh, yeah. the salmons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, si I'm sitting here. Uh, I'm sitting here holding one of my uh, bombers and uh, one of my well, my uh, uh, rubber cone bombers. And but if you compare, uh, how, how effective do you think they are compared to a regular bomber? Uh, I think uh, I, I still think that uh, for salmon uh, I would prefer uh, a bomber. Okay. Uh, yeah, but but uh, I have to be honest uh, that I have not uh, done it that much for salmon. Um, okay. I'm I'm not I'm not as blessed as you, Michael, and uh, and fish <laughs> the whole summer for salmon. So when I get to fish uh, in Norway, uh, I use mostly regular flies for salmon fishing uh, you know tubes and uh, regular hook flies and and then of course top water flies as uh, hitch and uh, skaters and so i use a lot but uh, most of uh, the time i fish uh, the the beetle the foam fly i fish it it did drift it as a bumper okay yeah 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 um, and and uh, when I'm in Norway or Sweden or other places where we got some current to fish in, I, I, I love to fish uh, regular. Um, oh, okay. And I'm not uh, on the upstream fishing with the with the foam line that that much. But when I've tried it, the salmon uh, uh, they don't like it. They're yeah. uh, eating on it. Okay, but, but that's uh, that's what they, they that's what they do with free floating flies. It's a, it's really interesting. But but I also been outfished by by uh, Canadians uh, uh, free floating flies when I was skating. But I can tell you that I actually caught fish on on skating this kind of flies with rubber legs and uh, and foam, but also rubber legged bombers. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting with my box in front of me where I have a whole lot of old flies uh, and uh, and uh, I, I showed some to this little film audience we have here. Okay, P Peter, thanks. So I'm, I must get going with the tying here, otherwise it's going, only going to be a, a, a talking film. But uh, <laughs> but give us the... the uh, the best little tips on how to fish this fly. What's the most important, do you think? Uh, the most important thing is that you, as in much other kind of situations, that you know your water and you know where the fish wants to uh, to stay. Yeah. And uh, you know the places where the fish wants to 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 be in the river or. It's, it's, it's the best secret, I can tell you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, but that's good. Free floating, quite shallow water, and uh, know where the fish are. That's superb, yeah. Peter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I am uh, have my bags packed, and my, my boxes are full of dry. So I'm going to Norway tomorrow. So uh, we'll see. Oh, uh, <laughs> see what... you. Good luck, Michael. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Luck has nothing to do with it. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, it's cocky, but uh, it's a bit of truth in it anyway. Okay, thank you very much for sharing this, Peter. And it's always interesting for me to find what I think is odd and new designs. So, superb. Okay? Yeah. Take care, my friend, and thank you. I will see if I can do your uh, flies justice here behind the waist. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay.
Okay, cheers. Bye bye. Yep. Bye bye. Okay. I hope you heard him. Uh, he's a modest guy. Uh, and uh, I can tell you that I know as a fact that very often people leave the river without having any any ticks at all. And Peter's been pulling one, two or three or four or five or some great fish. He's a, he's a specialist in doing this. Uh, so that was superb. Put the phone away and uh, let's see if we can start tying here and uh, get the old box away and perhaps uh, what I'm tying here is going to end up in that dry fly box leaving with me for Trendlow tomorrow. I don't know about tying flies in <laughs> when it's, what is it, Look, uh, 30 degrees outside today. Yeah, something like that. And the water is low and it's tricky conditions and tomorrow I'm heading north to Norway. Okay, tricky conditions, uh, warm water and time for dry flies. If you like to fish a dry fly, it's probably the best conditions. Um, to fish on the surface is a challenge. And um, like I said before, some parts of the world, they fish on the surface just because they uh, think it's the most effective way of fishing and catching a, a Atlantic salmon. Here in Scandinavia, our tradition is to fish on the surface when we actually caught a few fish or when nothing else works. Um, it's the same fish, different side of the sea maybe. And I think maybe we, we have some things to learn there, but okay. I'm gonna tie today on only our small tubing. And uh, when you decide the length here, uh, it's quite important to decide the length of the tube to what kind of foam you're going to put on. And um, I do hear about three centimeters and it's good with our cutter. You can see how, how long it is. And I start by melting this both ends. And uh, those of you watching me tie knows that I normally use two different tubes that I uh, adjust and put together. This time I just want a little bit of edge here. Wait until this is uh, set and I put it up on our needle. Um, now uh, I'm going to put a body on first, a body on the hackle, and then I will put on the foam uh, and the rubber legs afterwards. And um, you heard Peter on the phone here uh, telling me what he thinks is most important and why he do the design this way. And you've seen in my fly box, I have a million different designs on dry flies and uh, Maybe it's just because I haven't caught enough fish on a dry fly to know what's exactly the best fly. Um, or it's that you need, like in all fishing, you need a lot of different flies to be able to change and see what they actually take. Okay, but I'm uh, putting uh, uh, some tubing on here and some thread on here. I'm using our 12 o and I'm doing uh, a black one. You can do almost any color here, depending on the fly, of course, but I do a black here. Uh, I will start making this body uh, quite a bit in on the tube. And that is because I'd like to have the hook to be facing the edge 
the point of the foam. So don't go too far back and to fix the hook afterwards I use a little silicone because you need to use, if you use a small eye on a hook you can put it into the to the small fits but otherwise you have to use a little bit of uh, of uh, steering tube. Okay so not very often you see me get into the dry fly hackles and uh, I actually uh, looked at these and I picked out two of them here just to show you oh here we go even on a dry fly cape there are different kinds of feathers you can see how this is straighter and when I pull this feather down the fibers don't come together as much as on this one this is softer in the bottom meaning this hackle will hold more water and fishing on the on the surface you don't want it to hold a lot of water so I do this and I just pull down the fibers and uh, I'm gonna again create a little triangle here I'm gonna be lacy here I'm gonna tie this tie this hackle in the back and wind it front and fix it uh, what I can do is that I can take a piece of thread here and I can use our 8 thread and touch that first then wind the hackle um, from the front to the back and secure it with the with the thread. I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to do this the way I normally do when I tie flies like this. So I pull this out and it's good to have a long uh, fire, a long hackle and I cut it off so I get quite a long triangle and the reason for that is that I'd like to have this I'm going to put uh, some dubbing on here and I don't want the dubbing to interfere too much with my hackle fibers otherwise they're, they're going all over the way. Uh, today I'm going to do our regular dubbing and uh, this dubbing is superb when it comes to dries because uh, it does not hold water and it's very easy to put some floatant onto it and it will reject water and be floating high. So I do this, put a little bit of dubbing on at the time and here I'm more careful than I'm normally with when I put dubbing on. And uh, I will uh, Look where I have my little hackle, so I don't tie in too many of these fibers. Back down and turn it. And uh, I don't want a really fat body. I just want it to be a little bit, get a little volume to it and uh, to get some fibers sticking out with the hackle uh, making this look a little bit more alive since it's not much tying i have to do it slower so the film is not too short no i'm just kidding uh trying to be funny here it's too warm to be funny okay so I'll do this and you can see now how I'm going to stop this about here. Maybe a little bit more. Because I need that lip. Uh, here I'm going to secure the foam and I'm going to put some extra stuff on that. You see later. Here you can see I don't have any fibers tied in so it means I can start with this and just putting one turn and then I can put these fibers on, these uh, turns on 
pretty close to make this almost like a little dry fly or a little dry fly body and I pull the hackle down into my dubbing taking them back doubling the last little turn and tie it in careful so I don't get too many fibers pointing the wrong direction here we go and uh, now I'm gonna cut this close and uh, if I have a few fibers pointing up there I just pull them back like that uh, I can brush it a little bit if I want, but since I don't want this to be too bulky, I put a little bit of uh, less dubbing on and I'm not going to brush this. I'm going to just uh, hold it in like it is like that. Okay, so what can I do now? I can cut my thread and I can walk it uh, and I can tie it in again in the back. But I can also do this, cheat this a little bit and I can go back and I will secure a little bit of the hackle fibers here. Coming back at the end of um, my body. This will help if the hackle will break, the fly will not uh, be spun around and uh, destroyed. Okay, foam. I'm gonna do uh, two colors here now. I could do a black and yellow one. Or today I'm gonna do a black and green. But you can use foam like this and you can cut it. And the best is to, to uh, actually be really careful when you do this. And there are tools to get this done. But I'm gonna be lazy today. I'm gonna use a body that's already cut. But I don't really like the shape of this and uh, this is made to look like an insect. I'm taking this point away. So I take my little, my sitter and I just cut this away. Uh, I want it to be quite even like that. So now I'm going to tie this in and how I'm going to do it. I think this is, is it's made to be that way or you can do it that way. I always do the, uh, the light part in the bottom and uh, press the hackles down, hold this in and see where you are. I want this to be a little bit front of the place I have the tubing. So I, I look at this, hold it down and I can be pretty tough on this. And then I take the thread and I pull it down. A few turns like this, make it see so it's even. Looks okay. So next little thing here is to put rubber legs on. And I think it's like this. The faster water you fish, the stiffer you want your legs. The slower water you fish, the more you want the legs to um, to move. And I show I have one here that is with oops super soft legs like this. And this these legs will move on the surface even in still water. And you pull it and it will open and move. I have another one here with uh, stiffer legs. Since I fish most of the time in quite strong current, I prefer this. So I'm going to use these little stiffer legs on these ones now. Uh, I take two. And uh, those of you who love rubber legs know that there is a billion different legs on the market. I take this in and I pull it around starting with the one on my side legs 
like this. And it will sit there and I secure it with one or two or three turns. Make sure it's not coming together too much. I do the next one and um, hold it in, put it where you have the edge between the two colors on the foam, not coming down too much, and tie it in. I can now let these be and I can secure them when I'm ready with this. But now the thread is really vulnerable at this point, at this part here. So what I can do now is that I can do this. I can take this, take a little glue and I will be careful so I don't get it on my hackles, but I put a little glue onto the thread like this Today I have a new bottle, so it doesn't want to stay on as much as I want. And then I do tie this in, meaning this part now is secured with glue. Afterwards I can add a little glue if I want. Okay, again, I can cut this off and I can move the thread, tie it in and keep on going. But I can also do this. I can also lift this now, carefully move my thread through the hackles, again securing the feather. Okay, do the same. Hold this down. Make sure to push it a little bit so you stretch it and make it flat so it's not too much of a bubble okay stretch it out we don't want the bubble backed fly we want it to be fairly straight and i push it pull it in take the thread and tie it in See here, I have a foam that is breaking a little bit. So, oops, I have to glue that together. It happens. And um, just a little simple operation. Could have cut it away so you didn't see, but here we go. Come on. Uh, There we go. Looking so it's, uh, it looks like it's even on top. And I want this to stand up quite a bit here. And the reason I want that is that I'd like to be able to skate this in fast water and I'd like to be able to pull it. If I pull it, it will have to go up and not sink. Okay, so where are we? More rubber legs. And uh, legs are really good to have on the surface, actually. They, they do a lot of things with the fly. And I do the same. I take this and I pull it around, put it on my side, pull it in. And take the other one. and just yes, lift it up and touch it right where I have the two colors. Maybe too low. And do a few turns of thread. And I do again the same here. Put a little glue onto the thread. And uh, I can also put some extra on afterwards. And tie this in. Get a little thread, little glue on the thread all the way around, which I think is good. Hold it back, move the thread in. And actually here I can do what I never ever do otherwise. I can take and do a couple of hitches here. 
don't want my leg to be in there which one is it this one here we go and since I have a little bit of glue there I don't have to be doing it more careful okay so are they even yeah I think they're even when I cut the legs I like to cut the ones in the back a bit shorter then I cut the ones on the front. Don't ask me why. It's just that uh, I think it's quite nice to have the longer legs turn back and mix with these when, when you hitch them. Or when you... I, I mostly hitch them. I don't fish them loose that much. Here we go. If it's uneven, it's much easier for me to see when I take the fly, other device, turn it around. And uh, I can see that this guy is a little too long. And uh, these are now looking good, I think. Look at the fly, this is how it looks. From underneath, that's a little too long too. Is it important to get them even? I don't think so. Okay, so now this fly is almost ready, but there's a quite a cool little thing that I've never seen before. I looked at, at Peter Bill Christensen doing this, and that is that he takes a little eye and he puts the eye underneath. I use an epoxy eye here. And uh, same eyes I use for my, uh, for my tarpon flies. And I put this on the bottom under the fly like this. I will put a little bit of extra glue on there afterwards when I put them away drying. But if you look at this now, think about it. Why do they take it? Do they take the fly uh, because it's an insect? I don't think so. Maybe some citrat will do that. But this is now fishing this way with the eye looking down looking like there's something damaged that will float away on the surface with the motion from the legs and I think actually the eye adds to making this fly a really really uh, effective little dry fly so that was it quite simple uh, we have uh, different uh, colorations on these and um, you can of course do them any color you want uh, but I think the strong color uh, with the black or the brown is what works best. Uh, orange, green, yellow or phosphor uh, to create a little fly that has quite a bit of, uh, I was going to say life about it, <laughs> around it, but it looks, the bare legs look, makes it look a little bit more alive. Uh, okay, so, Peter Burke Christensen's Foam Beetles, and, uh, I must say, looking into my box, uh, I have quite a few flies looking very similar to this. Uh, and um, I bet Peter's been catching more fish on this than I have. But, and he showed uh, that it can be ex uh, very effective. He fished them both in Norway and uh, on the Danish Seatrat rivers. And, um, most of my dries, salmon I caught on dries, I caught on boners. 
I caught them on bombers with rubber legs, I showed you before. Uh, but also on regular bombers. But I think actually I'm gonna fish these a little bit more. And uh, off to Gala now, to Trondelag, Norway. And um, my dry fly box uh, has quite a lot of these new, for me, quite new inventions in my box. Uh, I hope you dare to try it, and I hope you dare to try it when the fishing is good, not only when nothing else works. Why should this work? Sometimes maybe it does, but if you want to catch a fish on the surface, do it when the fishing is good and the fish are fresh. Um, I think depth is more important when you fish it dry than temperature. So if you fish cl quite close to the fish, maybe two meters of water or less, I think this can be really, really effective. Okay, thank you very much for watching this odd little fly. Uh, quite different from most of the flies I've shown you in this series, but I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope, as I said, you dare to try it and that you get rewarded. So thank you very much for watching.